Welcome and thank you for joining us at Aliation. We specialize in CAD and CAE training, offering extensive internship and placement programs. On behalf of everyone here at Team Aliation, we'd like to extend our heartfelt thanks for your interest in Aliation Center of Excellence. We are thrilled to welcome you to Aliation's ANSYS basic training program. Before we delve into the learning process, could we please request you to have a new notebook or register and a pen ready? Creating your own notes will not only aid in understanding the course comprehensively, but will also serve as a quick revision tool for any topic at any time. In session 6, we will be exploring inertia relief analysis. Before we begin, let's take a quick recap. In the previous session, we have discussed the following topics. What is modal analysis? What is natural frequencies? Modes of vibration? How to perform modal analysis in ANSYS software? In this session, the following topics will be covered. What is inertia relief analysis? Requirements to perform inertia relief analysis. How to solve the model using inertia relief concept, difference between inertia relief and static analysis results. For a clear understanding of inertia relief analysis from a vehicle dynamics perspective. Let's analyze the role of an arm or control arm in automotive engineering. The control arm is typically a crucial component in a suspension system that allows for the desired degrees of freedom and motion. It experiences dynamic forces and undergoes complex motions as the suspension system responds to various road conditions. This arm is mounted with one end on the vehicle side and other end on the chassis. Technically speaking, it is not fixed from both the ends and the load can come from both the ends. Therefore, the stresses can occur on the arm because of the loads coming from both the ends. If you perform static analysis on such cases, obviously you are fixing one end and applying load at the other end. Practically, this is not the case. To accurately capture the dynamic effects on the arm, it must be allowed to move within its intended degrees of freedom. Constraining the control arm completely in a normal static analysis would limit its movement and restrict the dynamic effects. Therefore, if you want to simulate practical design, or if you want to simulate a practical situation, then inertia relief will help you to simulate the practical condition when the model is not constrained. Hence, we can say that the inertia relief analysis is used to perform the analysis of an unconstrained structure. It assumes the constraints, whatever you have applied as the counterbalance for the load what you are going to apply, we will see how to activate this concept. Now, we will solve this problem of an A-arm, where we will perform an analysis of an arm of a vehicle under the bump and braking force by using inertia relief analysis. We will use the material as structural steel. Element size as 10 mm. We will use a bump force of minus 1000 newton in x direction. We will fix this mounting location in x direction. Additionally, we will restrict the translation of this mounting location along the x and z directions. On the other mounting location we will prevent translation in all three axes, x, y, and z. Now we will open ANSYS workbench. This is my ANSYS workbench window. As I already told you, inertia relief is a concept which is applicable on different analysis systems. You will not find it as a separate analysis system. Today, we will see how to perform inertia relief under static structural. Therefore, in the analysis system, I will double click on static structural. In the project schematic, my analysis system, that is static structural, will open. Then, I will right click on geometry and click on new design modular geometry. Now, my design modular is open. First, I will change the unit system to millimeter. Then, I will go to file, import external geometry file, and select the 3D suspension link step file. A lightning symbol is appearing before import. Hence, I will click on generate to import that model. This is a 3D model. The model which I am having here contains an arm as well as a bush. You can see this is a bush which is inside the arm. I don't want this bush in the analysis, so I will delete this body. In the tree manager, you can see that I have two bodies, one is the arm, the other is the bush. There are many options using which you can delete bodies, which we will be covering in our basic to professional training program. But for now, I will be using the body delete option to delete the bush. I will go to create, in create, I will select delete and then, I will select body delete option. Then, I will select this body and say apply. Now, you can click on generate. As you can see, my body has been deleted. So, this is the arm on which I am going to perform the analysis. Here, first we will perform static structural analysis, considering the constrained location as a fixed support, and then we will perform inertia relief to understand the difference between static and inertia relief analysis. 
Now, I will again go back to the workbench, double click on model to open mechanical. As you can see, my model has been opened in mechanical. Now, I will right click on mesh, go to insert, select method. There are different ways in which you can create different types of elements, which we will be covering in our basic to professional training program. But for now, we will see how to create a tetra mesh. To create a tetra mesh, go to method, select tetrahedron. And under algorithm, select patch confirming. The difference between patch confirming and patch independent has been explained in detail in our basic to professional training program. Now, I will right click on mesh and say generate mesh. It will create 3D tetra elements because it's a solid model. As you can see, it has created 3D tetra elements on the component. Now, I will apply the loads. To apply the load, I will right click on static structural, go to insert, select force. First, we will apply a force. To apply force on the surface, I will click on this icon to select surfaces. I will select these inner surfaces, making sure to select all the surfaces. As you can see, there are some other patches also. Now, I have selected all the surfaces, click on apply. Also, change defined by vector to defined by component, and in the X component, I will apply a force of 1000 Newton. This is the force that I have applied on the inner surface of the arm. Now, I will apply constraints as per the problem statement. To apply constraints, I will right click on static structural, go to insert, select remote displacement. As per the problem statement, here, where the suspension is going to mount. I want to fix translation. Therefore, I will select this surface and give the X component as 0. Then again, I will right click on static structural, insert remote displacement. I will select these two surfaces. I will check whether all the inside surfaces have been selected or not. As per the problem statement on these surfaces, I have to fix XYZ translation. Hence, I will fix all X, Y and Z translation degrees of freedom by entering 0, keeping all others free. Then again, I will right click on static structural, go to insert, select remote displacement. Then, I will select these surfaces, the other joint surfaces. These are the surfaces which are not selected. You can select multiple surfaces by pressing control on your keyboard. Now, I have selected all these surfaces, click on apply. As per the problem statement, I have to fix X translation and Z translation degree of freedom for this joint. We have now applied all the constraints. Now, to understand how this component will behave, I will first solve it using normal static analysis without any inertia relief. I will right click on solution, insert deformation total. Again, I will right click on solution, insert stress equivalent von Mises stresses. These are the two outputs which are required. Therefore, I have selected these two outputs. Now, I will click on solve. As soon as I click on solve, you can see it has initiated a solver window. Upon completion of the analysis, you can view the results. This is the value of deformation because of normal static analysis. And this is the value of stresses. Because of normal static analysis. Now, if you animate, you can see in static analysis these two ends are completely fixed. They are not moving at all. Because of the constraint, the points which are connected to the roll cage or chassis are completely fixed. But practically, this is not going to happen. They are allowed to rotate because of the load as they have revolved joints. Practically, to simulate this case, we perform inertia relief analysis. To perform inertia relief analysis, we will have to activate inertia relief concept. To activate it, click on analysis settings under static structural analysis. In analysis settings, under solver control, you will find inertia relief off. Currently, I have told my software not to apply inertia relief concept. But now, I will change it. Click here and turn it on. Once you turn it on, then all the three constraints, whatever you have applied, is being considered as a support or as a counterbalancing constraint for the applied load. To see the results of the inertia relief analysis, I will again click on solve. You have to just turn on inertia relief under analysis settings to activate this concept. Again, to view the results, I will click on total deformation. You can also have a look at the equivalent von Mises stresses. Now, if you click on play animation, you can see this component is now moving, which is the actual practical scenario. So practically, also this will move because of the applied load. Hence, this is how inertia relief will help us to simulate the practical cases. So, whenever your component is not fixed or not completely fixed and you want to simulate that particular case, 
then you can use inertia relief. Then, whatever constraint you have applied, the software will consider those constraints as the support for counterbalancing load. Now, this is an unconstrained structure. The structure is not constrained. It has just been supported. And this is how the software has calculated the values of stresses and deformation. Now, we will see the difference between inertia relief and a normal analysis. When you keep inertia relief on, these are the values of stresses. In ANSYS, the choice between inertia relief analysis and dynamic analysis is influenced by the specific needs of your project. Inertia relief analysis is typically used for linear static structural studies. This method is effective for simpler models where the structural behavior is linear and the constraints are minimal. However, it has limitations and is not suitable for models that include nonlinear behaviors or a combination of different element types. Dynamic analysis is more comprehensive, accounting for time varying loads, inertia, damping, and nonlinear behavior. This method is preferred for its enhanced accuracy and detail in results, but requires more computational resources. In our ANSYS Basic to Professional Training program, we will delve into dynamic analysis, guiding you through its detailed application for complex engineering scenarios. Thank you for watching this session. Should you require any updates or additional information from us, please don't hesitate to contact us at support at aliation.com for more details on CAD and CAE software. Do subscribe or follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook and Instagram.